This is problem number one of the practice problems, more balanced moves, lesson four, more balanced moves. So in problem number one, both May and Tyler are working to solve this equation, two-fifths B plus one equals negative 11. And May's solution is negative 25, and Tyler's solution is negative 28. So do you agree with either of these and explain your reasoning? So let's look at May's first. What May does is she has this positive one here. So she wants to get rid of that. So you're going to have to add a negative one. So negative 11 plus negative one should be negative 12. She gets negative 10. So she went the wrong direction. She added a positive one to negative 11 instead of adding a negative one to negative 11. So here's an exa another example of a mistake with positive and negative terms. And so if two-fifths B equals negative 12, and then she multiplies by the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse of two-fifths, to remove this two-fifths, you multiply by five halves, which is the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse of two-fifths. That gives you B and a negative 12 now is the correct answer, times five halves, half of negative 12 is negative six. Negative six times five is negative 30 should be the answer. So five times a negative one times two times six. So I'm gonna factor out that 12 to two times six. The twos cancel out and you're left with negative 30. So the correct answer is negative 30. If you replace negative 30 up here with B, um, negative 30 divided by five is negative six. Two times negative six is negative 12 plus a positive one equals negative 11. So the correct answer is negative 30, which also shows you that Tyler's answer is incorrect. So let's see where Tyler made his mistake. It's two fifths B plus one equals negative 11. And his next step is he gets rid of the five here. He gets rid of the fifths by multiplying through by five. So two fifths times two fifths B times five is equal to two B. These fives cancel out. This five here cancels with this five here. And on the other side, he has five times negative 11 equals negative 55. Unfortunately, he forgot to multiply this one by five as well. So you have to multiply each term. So five times two fifths B is two B, and then also five times one, this should be five and five times neg uh, negative 11, this should be negative, or is negative 55. And if you look at this as the distributive property, using the distributive property, five times two fifths B is two B, and then five times this one right here is five. So you have to multiply everything, every term in the expression by five. And you can see that two different ways, either using the distributive property or just simply multiplying through by five. So if you multiply through by five, this is five. And so now it's two B plus five plus a negative five. So to get rid of this five, you're gonna add a negative five, negative 55 plus negative five is negative 60, not negative 56. This is negative 60. And one half of negative 60 is negative 30. So one half, so the multiplicative inverse of two to get rid of this two as the coefficient gives you one here. So this is B equals and one half of a negative 60. So negative one times 30 times two, which is 60. These twos cancel out and you're left with negative 30. So the correct answer again is negative 30. This is problem number two in which you're supposed to solve this equation. So find the value of x that satisfies this equation. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I always do, is I'm going to change subtracting a positive 4. So remember, this is positive 4 right here, to adding a negative 4. So once I do that, so I'm going to distribute the 3, 3 times x. It means I have three groups of x plus negative 4. 
Well, if you look inside those three groups, you're going to find a single x in each of those three groups. That's going to give you three x's. You're going to find negative 4 in each of those three groups. That's going to give you a, a negative 12. And that all together equals 12x. And get rid of the positive 3x on this side by adding a negative 3x. And you want to work with this side because it has the fewer x's. So if you do that, you're going to be left with positive x's on this side. So add a negative 3x, that gets rid of this positive 3x. And 12x plus a negative 3x equals 9x. So 12 plus negative 3 equals 9x. And you're left with that equal that equals negative 12. All right, so now get rid of this 9. So how do you do that? You mu multiply by the multiplicative inverse to get rid of this coefficient of 9. So 1 9th of 9 is 1. So you also have to look at 1 9th of negative 12. So 1 9th of negative 12. So this is going to become 1. And to um, figure this out, you can factor out this 12. So first of all, it's negative 1 times 12 times 4 times 3. And these 3's will cancel. 9 is 3 times 3. These 3's three can cancel. You're left with a negative 4 thirds. So x equals negative 4 thirds. Replace this x up here with negative 4 thirds. See if it works. So negative 4 thirds for this x and a negative 4 thirds for this x. 3 times negative 4 thirds. This 3 times 3 is going to cancel. You're going to be left with negative 4. And 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So this side is going to be negative 4 plus negative 12. And on this side, this is 12 times negative 4 thirds. So you can factor out the 12. So 3 times 4 times this 4 here and times the negative 1. So hopefully you understand where all this is coming from. And that's all divided by 3 or multiplied by 1 third. These 3's cancel out and you're left with negative 16. So negative 16 equals negative 16. Another way to look at this right here is that this answer is 1 third of 12 more than 12. Because this says 4 thirds of 12. 3 thirds of 12 would be 12. 1 third of 12 is 4. So this is going to be 1 third more. So 12 plus that 1 third more, which is 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. And it's the opposite of that and negative 16. Hopefully that makes sense. So 1 third of 12 is 4. 2 thirds of 12 would be 8. 3 thirds of 12 would be 12. And 4 thirds of 12 would be 16. So you're increasing by 4 each time. 1 third of 12. 4, 8, 12, 16. And it's the opposite of that. So it's negative 16. This is problem number three and says describe what is being done in each step while solving the equation. So this is the given equation and in four steps, one, two, three, four, <clears throat> they get down to the answer of x equals six elevenths. Well, just in general, before we go through this, in general, if you see something inside parentheses, there's a couple of ways that you can get rid of those parentheses. One way is to multiply through by one half. So one half of two. So you can use the multiplicative inverse. This would become one. And then you have to multiply this term by one half and this term by one half. Well, this is one. Two times one half is one. But you would end up with five halves x here. Probably best to stay away from that. So another way, and which is the way that they um, solve this in this problem, is to distribute this two to negative 3x and this 2 to 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So the first step, oh, actually let me go back for just a second, and then once you get rid of the parentheses, then it's just a matter of moving terms around by using the additive inverse of those terms to get everything, get all the x's on one side, get the numbers on the other side, and once you get down to just a, a variable, in this case x, with a coefficient, 11 in this case, then you multiply by the multiplicative inverse to make this 11 once. So you're going to look at 1 11th of 11x, and so you're going to look at 1 11th of 6, which is 6 elevenths. All right, let's go back to the top. The first step is to distribute this 2. 
you have to remember to multiply each term by two. It's as, as, it is as if you have two groups. You look in each of those two groups, you see a negative 3x in each group. So you have two times that. Two times a negative 3x is a negative 6x. And in each of those two groups, you have four things. So you have a total of eight things in all. So two times this four is eight, and you're left with 5x plus two on the right side. So the first step is to distribute the two. So you have to get rid of these parentheses first. Next, can you see that this is 11x here? Can you see where that 11 is going to come from? Well, six plus five is 11. We're going to add a positive 6x to get rid of that negative 6x. So a positive 6x plus a negative 6x, that's going to get rid of this negative 6x on this side. You're left with this 8. And then 5x plus a positive 6x now gives you that 11x plus 2. So add a positive 6x to remove the negative 6x. So that is using the additive inverse on this step. Now you're also going to use the additive inverse to get rid of this 2. So now you have to move the numbers over to the other side. So um, you're going to add a negative 2. So do you see that 8 plus a negative 2 is equal to 6? 8 minus 2, or 8 plus a negative 2 equals 6. So 8 plus negative 2 equals 6. And on this side, you're left with 11x because you take the positive 2 here and you add a negative 2. So this equals 0. So you're using the additive inverse again. So now once you get down to here, you have to get rid of this coefficient. And the way to do that is to think about, you have to get this to 1x. So you want to look at 1 11th of these 11 things to look at 1x. So you multiply by 1 11th, and also you have to look at 1 11th of this 6. So 1 11th of 6 is 6 11ths. 1 11th of 11 things is one of those things, because these 11s now cancel out. That makes sense. If you have 11 things and you look at just 1 11th of those 11 things, you're going to be looking at just one of those. So it's a 1x. So remove the coefficient of x, which is 11, by using the multiplicative inverse. And you get down to here. The 11s cancel out, and you're left with 6 11ths equals x or in other words, x equals 6 elevenths. So the pattern is to get rid of the parentheses, and then in general, you're going to use the additive inverse to move everything um, of one kind to one side, so the like terms. So the variables, all the variables to one side, and the other like terms are just the numbers, move all the numbers to the other side, and the last step usually is going to be to remove the coefficient using the multiplicative inverse. So distribute, additive inverse, additive inverse, multiplicative inverse is the general pattern to solve these problems. This is problem number four, and in this problem, Andre has solved this equation, but then when he checks this equation, he realizes that he has the wrong answer because he doesn't get the same expression or the same answer on one side as he does on the other side. So if you replace x with five up here, 3 times 5 is 15, 15 minus 5 is 10, uh, 2 times 10 is 20, and the opposite of 20 is a negative 20. So this side is negative 20. This side is 5 plus 3 is 8, 4 times 8 is 32, 32 plus 8 is 40. So it's negative 20 on this side and 40 on this side, which tells him that x does not equal 5. So he has to go through and find where he made him, his mistake. So as you look at the first step, I'm going to change this subtracting a positive 5 to adding a negative 5. And the first step is getting rid of these parentheses. So if you look back at this, you want to get rid of the parentheses in some way. And there's a couple ways to do that. Then you want to move all the x's to one side, the numbers to the other side, and then use the multiplicative inverse to get rid of the coefficient. So going from this, the beginning equation to this first step re removes the parentheses by just using the distributive property. And this is OK. So this is negative 2 times 3x. So it's the opposite of two groups of 3x. 2 times 3x is 6x. The opposite of that, of that is negative 6x. And a negative 2 times negative 5. So 2 times negative 5 
is negative 10 and the opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. So this is okay. 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus, or, um, and then add that to 8. The next step is he combines these terms together. And this step is okay also. So negative 6x plus 10, and on this side, 4x plus 20. This is where he makes this mistake. He wants to get rid of all of the x's on one side, and he's going to choose to get rid of the negative 6x so that he has positive x's over here, but actually ends up with negative x's. And so what he does is he says, I'm going to just move this negative 6x over here and combine them. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, so you end up with negative 2x. Well, you can't do that. You can't just take this term and move it over here. You have to remove it by adding its additive inverse. The additive inverse of a negative 6x is a positive 6x. So now if I add a positive 6x to this side, this goes away. But I have to add a positive 6x to this side. A positive 6x plus 4x is 10x. So this side should be a positive 10x. So this should be 10x right here. Okay, now he gets rid of the... If we were going to continue with this, and if we were done properly, you get rid of the 20 by adding a negative 20. So 20 plus negative 20. So you're going to add the additive inverse to get rid of terms that are added. So 20 plus negative 20 is 0. And 10 plus negative 20 is negative 10. So this side now is negative 10. This side is still 10x. Now to get rid of this 10x, to get rid of the 10, you multiply by the multiplicative inverse, and that makes sense. I want to look at 1x out of 10. So that's 1 tenth of these 10x's. I also, at the same time, I have to look at 1 tenth of negative 10. And 1 tenth of negative 10 is negative 1. And 1 tenth of 10x is x. So x equals negative 1. So now you take the value of negative 1 and you replace it in the beginning with replace x in the beginning with negative 1. So this is 3 times negative 1 here and negative 1 plus 3 here. Now I can either calculate with inside the parentheses, which is what I did on the left side. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus negative 5 is negative 8. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, but the opposite of that. So the opposite of 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. And on this side, I use the distributive property. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. And that makes sense. I have four groups. In each of, the gro each of those groups, I have a negative 1. So that means I have altogether a neg ne four negative 1s. That's equal to negative 4. And I have four 3s. That's equal to 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. And negative 4 plus 20 is positive 16. So that works. 16 equals 16. So negative 1 is the solution to the equation. x equals negative 1. This is problem number 5. You have four equations and two solutions. So 5, 7, 8, 13. And these solutions will only match one of these four equations. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. One way is to take each of these points replace the x and the y values, so x is 5, y is 7, and see if this side of the equation, so if we're working with a, see if this side of the equation equals 8, the same as this answer on the right side is equal to 8. And then plug in 8 for x and 13 for y, and do this again to see if, again, this side is equal to 8, which is the same as the right side. So if we do that, you're going to find out that 5, 7 actually is a solution to the equation. So 5, 7 is on the line that's defined by this equation because you get 8 equals 8. But then if you plug in um, x equals 8 and y equals 13, you get 11. So 11 does not equal 8. So 8, 13 is not a solution to this equation. So a does not work. Now that's kind of hard for me to do, to go through each one of these a lot of calculations to figure out whether or not both of these points are solutions to these equations. A much easier way to do this is to remember that in this form of the equation, y equals mx plus b, this is called the slope 
intercept form. So this is the slope of the line, and this is where that line crosses the y-axis. So if we just rewrite each of these equations in this form, the coefficient of x is going to tell you whether or not it's the correct equation, because that's going to be the slope. So what's the slope of the line of this um, that these two points are on? Well, you figure out the length along the y-axis, which is 13 minus 7 is 6 units. The length along the x-axis is 8 minus 5. 8 minus 5 is 3 units. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the length along the y-axis is always going to be 2 units greater than the length, 2 times greater than the length along the x-axis. So, so for every unit x you move along the, the x-axis, you're going to move 2 units along the y-axis. So y is 2 times greater than x. So let's just rewrite each of these four equations in this form and see which one matches um, having a 2 for the coefficient of x up here. So remember, it's the length along the y-axis is 13 minus 7 units, which is 6 units. The length along the x-axis is 8 minus 5 is 3 units. And if you uh, imagine, once again, moving this slope triangle, start here at 5, 7, you end at 13, start here at 5, 7, yeah, and end at 13, 8, 13, then you have to remove where you started. So you started at 7 units up, so you're going to remove these 7 units to get this side to rest along the horizontal, to rest along the x-axis, so the horizontal side slides down here, rests along the horizontal axis, and this triangle then slides to this point right here, the starting point slides to the origin by removing these five units. Then this slides over, so you take the 13 minus 7, slide this down, and then 8 minus 5. So this 8 here, minus these 5 units, slides this over to 3, to right here. So this slope triangle then slides over to here. All right, so let's see which ones match that. And actually, this one right here is written in the slope-intercept form, and 2 is the slope. So this is the correct equation. You really don't have to go much farther than that. So y is equal to 2x plus a negative 3. It also tells you that the um, where the line crosses the y-axis is at negative 3. But let's go through the rest of these and check. So this one... This is y, I'm going to add, um, this is plus a negative y, so I'm going to add positive y here to move the y over to this side. So this is y equals, and then this is a negative 8. To move this 8 to this side, it's negative 8. So y is equal to 3x plus negative 8, so the slope is 3 for this line. So that doesn't work. For this one, this is already in the slope-intercept form. The slope is 1 for this line, so that one doesn't work. And this one add a positive x, so y is equal to 1x plus 5, and the slope once again is 1, so this one does not work. This is the only one that has a slope of 2, and it crosses the y-axis once again at negative 3, so let's check that. You can figure out where this line crosses the y-axis by using these two points, replacing 8, 13 with y for the 13 and 8 for x. So this is y minus 7. Remember, we subtracted that 7 units. And x minus 5, we subtracted the 5 units. So this relationship, this length, y minus 7, is twice as long as this length, x minus 5. So y minus 7 is equal to 2 times the length along the x-axis. So that length, you can use the distributive property. This is 2x. There's the slope right there. It's going to be 2x, 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 and 2x. So there's the 2x times 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So now we just have to get the numbers to this side. So when you work with this kind of equation, you solve for y, you have y on the left side, and you move all of the x's and all of the numbers to the right side. Well, the x's are already on the right side. This is... Um, y minus 7 equals 2x plus negative 10. This is 
adding a negative 7. So to get rid of that negative 7, add a positive 7, the additive inverse. So you end up with y equals 2x. Then a negative 10 plus a positive 7 is negative 3. y equals 2x plus negative 3. Let me just go back. So this, is, this matches this equation over here, which makes sense. I'll just go back and show you using this graph right here. You can figure out that y equals negative 3 from this graph. So if I, I'm at this point right here, I can move down 6 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 3 units, 1, 2, 3. So this point is on the line. Now to get to the y-axis, I have to move 2 thirds of these 3 units more to the left. I'm at this point right here. So I have to use, move two-thirds of the length along the x-axis, which means I have to move two-thirds this way, the length along the, the y-axis to get the y-coordinate. Well, two-thirds of six is four. Six divided by three is two. Two times two is four. So two, four, six. So two-thirds of six is four. So that means I'm going to move down four units. Well, if I'm at one, Right here, at, if I'm at 1, then 1 and then plus a negative 4 is negative 3. So you're going to end up down here at negative 3. So this is going to be 1, 2, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you're going to end up down, down here, goes off the page, down here at negative 3, and over here to get to um, x equals 0, 2 units to the left. So that again shows you that where this line crosses the y-axis is going to be down here off the page at negative 3. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but just different ways to look at this problem. This is problem number 6, and it says that you have a length of ribbon that gets cut into two pieces to use for a craft project. And the graph shows the length of the second piece along the x-axis. Here's the length of the second piece down here um, for each length of the first piece. So the first piece is along the horizontal, or I'm sorry, the vertical axis. So here's the length of the first piece right here. And the question is, how long is the ribbon altogether? Explain how you know what is the slope of this line right here. What's the slope of this line? And what is that slope? mean in the story. And I, you know, I looked at this for a while and I thought of a way that you could act this out in a classroom because I think that becomes very um, revealing of what's going on as you cut that ribbon. So imagine that you have um, a 15 foot piece of ribbon and you give the cuts to one of two people. The first cut goes to one person and they tack that up. They always tack that first cut, the first piece of ribbon, they always tack that up vertically along the wall. And the second person, they get the second piece and they always tack that piece up horizontally along the wall. Now you're going to have to find a wall somewhere where it can go up 15 feet. So that's taller than most classrooms. So you might have to do this out in the hallway of your, of your school or um, use 10 feet instead of 15 feet, or use 15 units and each unit, 15 equal units, and have each unit be less than a foot something so you can work with 15 units, um, but still get that up in the classroom. That's a way that that could work. You could work with 15 inches, although that doesn't, um, it's not very long. Although each group in a classroom could do this on a piece of paper or poster paper using 15 inches of ribbon. So lots of different ways to cut this, <laughs> as you might imagine. All right, so let's say that you make the first cut. So you go all the way out here. Actually, let's go back here. You go all the way out. You have a 15-foot piece of ribbon, and you make the first cut right here. Well, how much are you going to give to the person that gets the first piece? They're going to get nothing. So they don't have anything to tack up vertically and the entire length is horizontal. So that right there actually tells you the length of the ribbon. The length, length of the ribbon is 15 feet long. So let's go to the second person. 
And so that or the second um, cut that you make. And so let's say you go in one foot and make a cut. This first piece goes to the first person who tacks up the first piece of ribbon. And so they tack up one foot vertically. And you can tack it up right here. And the second um, piece is going to go to another student, and they're going to tack that piece up horizontally. So notice they took the ribbon, and they had to have moved it up one foot, and now it's one foot shorter. And the person that's tacking up the first piece of ribbon, this is one foot longer. So to stay on this line, they increased the vertical length, so the first piece, one foot, and they decrease the second piece one foot. So it's a positive one along the vertical axis and a negative one along the horizontal axis. Well, that slope is a positive one, the length along the vertical axis, over a negative one, the length along the horizontal axis. So that works out to be a slope of negative one. So let's say that you repeat this, you do this again, and they cut off another foot. So they're going to tack up that second foot right on top of the first foot. Notice they have to move this vertical piece over one more foot. And that means the horizontal piece is one foot less. So the total is the vertical length has increased two feet. The horizontal length has decreased two feet. So that's an increase of positive two along the vertical axis, negative two along the horizontal axis. That is a slope of, once again, negative 1, because this is a negative 1 times 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is equal to 1. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. All right, so let's jump ahead. Let's say they cut off another 3 feet. So they move all the vertical length over here, and the horizontal length has to move up to this point. So the total gain, the total gain in the vertical length has been a positive 5 feet, so this is the first cut of the ribbon, and the total length, or I'm sorry, the total loss, or the total decrease in the horizontal length has been a negative five feet. So again, that slope is a positive five in the vertical direction, negative five in the horizontal direction, so that's a negative one times five over five, and again, the slope is negative one. Okay, let's jump ahead, and they jump up to cutting off another seven feet. So now the total length of the first cut is a positive 12 feet. The total loss of the second cut, second piece, is a negative 12 feet. So that's a slope of positive 12. The vertical length is positive 12. The horizontal length is negative 12. And that is a slope, again, of negative 1. It's a negative 1 times 12 over 12, negative 1 times 1, or the opposite of 1 is negative 1. So let's take the entire ribbon. Take the entire ribbon from here, and now say that the imaginary cut is down here. And this first, this is the first piece. You give that to the, the first student who tacks this up vertically. So it has a vertical length of 15 feet. The horizontal length, the second piece, is zero. So that's right here. So that's been from, from the starting point. We have gained 15 feet in the vertical direction and lost 15 feet in the horizontal direction. So that's a positive 15 over a negative 15. So the length in the vertical direction is positive 15. The length in the horizontal direction is a negative 15. And again, that slope is negative 1. Negative 1 times 15 over 15 is the opposite of a positive 1 is negative 1. Now let's say we work backwards. So now this is going to be a gain of positive 3 feet for the second piece, but a loss of 3 feet for the first piece. So now the vertical direction is negative and the horizontal direction is positive. So now the signs switch from the vertical direction is now negative. It was positive before because we were gaining feet vertically and losing feet horizontally. Now we're gaining feet horizontally and losing feet vertically. So the vertical, the first piece is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. The second piece is getting longer and longer and longer. 
So the, the vertical length is a negative three feet. The horizontal length is a positive three feet. Still works out to be a negative one times three over three. The opposite of a positive one is negative one. So the slope is still negative one. So if we continue, the slope is gonna be a positive 10 feet gain in the horizontal length, a loss of 10 feet in the vertical length. So this is gonna be negative 10 over positive 10. Slope is negative one, 13 feet. A gain of 13 feet in the horizontal direction, loss of 13 feet in the vertical direction. So a negative one again is the slope. 14 feet gain, 14 feet loss. So it's a negative 14 over positive 14. Negative 14 over positive 14. Again, the slope is negative one. And finally, if you just take this ribbon and rotate it down here, it's a 15 foot gain in the horizontal direction, a 15 foot loss in the vertical direction. Again, the slope is negative one. So the ribbon is 15 feet long. Every single time the horizontal piece plus the vertical piece always added up to this 15 feet out here, wherever you were. So this piece plus this piece, this piece right here, tacks on over to the end here. It always ends up at 15 feet. So what you can say is that the length along the X axis plus the length along the Y axis is always 15 feet. So X plus Y equals 15. The ribbon is 15 feet. The second length makes up the difference to equal 15. So whatever that first length is, the second length is gonna get added to that to equal 15. So X plus Y equals 15 feet. So if we were at 0.78, the first piece is eight feet, the second piece is seven feet. So if this is seven feet out here, the first piece is eight feet. So this is going to rotate up here and end up going out here to 15 feet. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get you out to 15 feet. And so the value of x plus the value of y is always going to equal 15. And so the slope is negative one. Whatever we did, the um, loss or gain in the vertical direction was the, an equal but opposite loss or gain in the horizontal direction. So if we gained one foot in the horizontal direction, we lost a foot in the vertical direction. If we gained you know, five feet, in the horizontal direction, we lost five feet in the vertical direction. If we gained 10 feet in the vertical direction, we lost 10 feet in the horizontal direction. So it was the equal but opposite gain or loss when you compare the two lengths. So that slope of negative one means that for every unit increase in one length, there is an equal unit decrease in the other length. So that's why the, the um, slope is always an equal but opposite number because you're always um, gaining because you're taking that piece and you're rotating it either vertically. So there's you're losing length horizontally and gaining length vertically or you're rotating, you're cutting a piece and rotating that piece horizontally. So you're losing vertically, but gaining horizontally. But those are always equal length pieces. It's just that they're moving in the opposite direction. I think acting this out makes it a lot clearer what's going on, a lot more understandable.